now that we have created the project, uh, what we need to do is create our base class. That's the first thing you need to do. So let's go to Visual Studio and let's go to the uh, module. And Developer Express already presents you a structure of folders that uh, is not required to use, but I think it's recommended because it will help you to keep the files together. For example, in the business object, you will put all the business objects, you know, the, the, enti the entity classes. In the controllers, you will put all your big controllers. In the updaters, database update, you will have the updater. But uh, most of the time, I only create one. I never use more than one, but I think you can add more than one to a sub solution. The functional test, that's for easy test. Uh, I don't use it that much. Um, I tried to use it some time in the past, but it was not mature enough. So I think I will give it a try on the future. Uh, so let's start. Let's create the business object that we need. So let's go and see the list. So first we're going to create the base, um, the base class. For this, I'm going to add a, I think it's SAF or um, And you have to be careful if you have more than one version of, of SAF installed because if you add this one, for example, it will add the reference to the Express 14. So you have to be careful about that. Uh, there are three types or two types of ORM components. The first one and the one I always use is, is not visual, it's a simple class. And there, there is other version that, that contains the, the UI. Uh, I only use it that one, like one or two times, but uh, in this case, I'm going to use the, only the, the, the regular class. And I'm going to name this um, main base class. So after I think version 12, they start adding all these comments. Then for me, they look really nasty because it's a lot of, of text that you don't need, but those are recommendations to follow. And if you forgot, how to write any attribute or something, they are really useful. So in this case, well, I'm going to clean it up at the end, but um, let's see. So this is going to be public, but it's going to be abstract. So in this case, uh, as, I mark, as I mark this as abstract, it won't create any database table and actually I need to do something else. I need to do the not to add the non-persistent. So your base class should be abstract and non-persistent because if you go here and double check the code, this is abstract, but if you go to the source code, you will see that it's not persistent also. So in here they put all the like they are actually using an XP custom object. But I don't need to create the key assignment stuff or any other stuff. So most of the time I use the same base object and I overwrite some stuff on it. But let's go and add the properties that we need to add. So we're going to create a text created by and updated by. So we are going to mark this as private. So this can be set from the outside and I'm going to do the same with this. I, 
well, I guess I should use protector instead. So all the classes that inherit from him are able to write it. And we have this and this and let's go in and add the the date fields. This is the And I'm going to do the same, protector and protector. So um, then we should go here to the after construction. And so after it, the after construction only happened once, the first time you instance this object and the object is new. The next time you load it from the database, uh, the after construction won't happen. So we will use this method to set the updated by and create it on. Uh, day time now. Don't forget to put the date member, not just now, because now it will, well, that depends on your case, but if you use now, your queries are going to be more difficult because they have to include the time. So then the, the, um, the date matches, but in this case, I'm going to, I'm going to forget now the date I'm going to use now, so you can see. And So in this case, we're going to use a security system. Uh, there is a static class. Uh, uh, this is the object that represents the user, but we just want to use the username. That is a string, so we're going to use that current username. I don't really know which one is the difference. Oh, this is an object too. Because you don't know what kind of key is that uh object using so in this case we're going to use the current username and beside that we are going to well let's clean this and let's clean this And let's go and override uh, the unsaving method. So let's call to the base unsaving, and this in here we're going to add something. This updated on date time not now this create oh, per sorry I was going to say perdón because I speak Spanish my my native language so uh, instead of say excuse me well this is going to be updated by and we're going to use the same line I'm really lazy so I'm going to copy this And that's pretty much it regarding the base class. So every time you add a new class, you will have to inherit from main base class instead of base object.